everybody, it's Mountain Mike. Back here again on the mountain. Thanks for checking in with me and see what's going on. Today, I'm uh, finally back to the video that I promised you. So I've got the bed assembly moved over to the sawmill location. So now we can do the truing and tightening down. Alright, so for the last video we did the uh, bed, cross bunk, and trailer assembly. Of course we didn't have the trailer assembly, but now we're to bed truing and tightening. So we got to have some string, some clamps. So we have to also put the retainer rails back on that I took off for the uh, moving of locations here. Uh, that went real easy and smooth. I'm glad I went ahead and pre-assembled in the shop. Okay, we've encountered our first serious issue. So this piece here is a short retainer rail. And if you can see here, it does not line up anywhere close. And these are supposed to be a uh, perfect lining up. You see the big gap there. Uh, so what happened when it was bent in the machine, it got cockeyed. And the bend should have been lower down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap sides and it lines up because it's bent right on the other side and it lines up at least uh, till I can contact Norwood and try to get me another piece in. But I want to do the whole carriage assembly and get everything assembled and make sure there's nothing else wrong with this. So we're going to continue on with this, swap sides and just go forward for now. But we know this piece is not right. Okay, so I've swapped sides and it, it at least matches up over here even though it grows much wider down here on this end. We're gonna need to start tightening things down and uh, go forward. So let's get to it. got string run on both sides and it says to use a one of these nine sixteenths nuts right here as a spacer you come on down you do it on both ends and one in the middle I need to tighten my string but that's uh you can tell it's touching on both sides so obviously my ends are lower than my middle we need to uh shim up the the ends a little bit let's try that all right so we now have one side that is leveled out all the way across using the string and nut method according to Norwood and really all you have to do is uh, keep all your top edges flush and you want to make sure with the string that it doesn't have a bow mine had one in the middle I had to shim up on each end a little bit and I think that one's got that side pretty square and we're gonna leave that alone and we're gonna move to the next side and get it the same way then we can put the feet on it once it's all tightened up all the nuts and bolts are in it so we continue on with the journey so I've got everything trued up and leveled the way I'd like it's looking real nice I do suggest that you have a bucket of shims when you do this I, I use quite a few uh, if you have a big cement pad or something you're putting this on that that's great you know you probably won't need as many but I definitely, uh, with my my wood variations and everything, needed a few, quite a few shims. So um, you know, expect to have those on hand when you're doing this part, and it'll go a lot smoother and quicker. Uh, I didn't anticipate using quite as many as I did. All right, so I'm back at it this morning, and I noticed in the instruction manual last night when I was reading through things that if uh, 
you're tightening all the top bolts which you're supposed to be doing at this point when you're doing the truing up of the bed assembly that number 12 and 13 or 14 and 15 depending if you have the trailer assembly or not those bolts right there need to be left off or loose because you're going to end up taking them loose i've already tightened mine down and uh we'll just take them loose it's not that big of a deal but just know ahead of time that that's going to be uh, something that you encounter they don't tell you up front now you know i definitely stripped a couple of the heads of the nuts out uh putting too much force on them i didn't feel like it was too much force they don't give you a torque value so you have to just make your own mind up what that's going to look like to me the tighter the better this is all supposed to stay true once you get it tightened down so in that sense i, I think they should have supplied you with a little better bolts and it really looks more like the nut than the bolt. So we're going to go ahead and move this over a little bit to have it better supported under these runners that I put on here. And we're going to go ahead and put the feet under it. Alright, so we've got it supported underneath the runners the best we can under the deck here. So everything is going to be well supported all the way down. Now we just have to put the feet on it. Now it was not clear when in the instruction manual where to put the feet uh, it's unclear about several things it just says choose the large hole all right so there's a large hole right there well there's several large holes throughout this there's one there's one and there's more than feet so the best i can tell is you choose the one closest to your cross bunk and it supports each cross bunk so on this one, I'll be choosing the one on the left right there. So let's get to it. We're going to put some feet under this thing. All right, so we have the adjustable feet on it now. As you can see, they're not much, but they'll level it out, and that's all we really need from it. Okay, so I've got my feet on, and we're going to adjust these out with some levels uh, crosswise because once we tighten the bed assembly up it is going to be level lengthwise and it should stay that way if you tightened it up correctly so we're going to take some levels and take these adjustable feet and level it out real quick and then we're going to go over to the shop and get into the boxes and get some more parts out that are relevant for our next few steps and bring them over and go ahead and put them on. I'm curious to see if I have enough of the bolts that go to this uh, portion. I was looking through the instruction manual last night and it did not appear that I'm going to have enough. I only have three bolts and nuts left and I believe I need eight total before we move on to another packet. Uh, that's gonna leave me five short. That's an issue we're going to encounter i believe but we'll see maybe i'm reading this wrong and we can go forward so let's adjust these feet out and go ahead and get it all leveled out and then we're ready to uh, go ahead and get these parts <laughs> too hard now was it we got it all leveled out looking good it looks like it's ready to throw some more stuff on it so I got to get a 15 16 wrench and socket so we can put the top nut on these adjustable feet and lock them in place they have a hole in the foot of them so you can screw them to your deck but they barely <laughs> stick out past the rails I'm not sure how you were supposed to screw into these so I've turned them catty corner to the rails and it sticks out just a bit and I think that'll give me enough for a screw to go into it. So we're back at the shop and we're going to do some part collecting out of these boxes. It's telling me that I do the log rest next. So we're going to have to contact Norwood about the dysfunctional part and the missing nuts and bolts 
Uh, I want to go ahead and go forward and definitely see what else is missing or dysfunctional in these boxes, if anything at all. Hopefully nothing. Uh, maybe everything else will work out. So we're going to go ahead and continue with the assembly before we contact Norwood and see what we can't do. So we're going to pull out box number six and it should be bag number two. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so here's the log rest. That's the next step in the assembly. Then it says bag number two. You get nuts and bolts out of that. Let's see, is this bag number two? Ah, bag number two, log dog and log rest bag. The next brackets to go on will be these after these. I'm hoping they provided the nuts and bolts in this bag, but it doesn't say that. It says it was in number one bag. And like I said, I only have three left of those, so. Okay, so we got our parts for our next steps. Uh, like I said, we may end up having to go ahead and skip the log rest right now, which is okay. We can get the rest of it assembled without that. So reading ahead in the instruction manual, the next step is to get box number 10 and do the saw head and carriage assembly. With box number 10, you need to get other bags and components. So it doesn't tell you in, in the instruction manual, but it's in box 1A. So you'll pretty much be getting a lot of bags out of this from this point forward. Um, it, it doesn't specify, but just so you know. Hey, you, you, right there. Yeah, you. Do me a favor. Hit that subscribe and like button. Help my videos get out there. Appreciate you. All right, so we're back at the sawmill location. And we've got box number six. We ended up with box number eight, 9A, and number 10. Those are gonna be the next in the process. It's actually gonna be 10, 9A. Really, we've skipped over the part where your retainer rails join together, there may be a little bit of unevenness. You need to take a file and go ahead and smooth that so it doesn't affect your carriage when it rolls up and down your track. I don't really have any places that I, I feel like need filed on. I'm going to go ahead and hit them all real quick just for good measure. There is one place on the, the, the main rail that kind of raises up past my retainer rail and makes it a little uneven. I think I can take and file that down if it causes me any problems. I'll probably never know it's there, but you know, it's something to be really careful about is the evenness of your track. Let's see if we can, there you go. So the levelness right here, this is what your carriage is gonna ride on, your rollers. And the joints between the two retainer rails is what you want to make sure is smooth. But you want to make sure the two surfaces are mated evenly. You take a square and you can look at it. I did it by feel. You can definitely feel the difference when it's not even. So just a FYI. So this is the contents of box number six laid out. This is what you'll get. As I've said, the log rests are gonna be the next step. And these are the log rest posts. And these will all go together. I don't believe I have the nuts and bolts to put these on. I only have three left. I need eight. Unless they're contained in this package, which it does not say that they are. So we're going to go forward. We're going to set these aside for now. And we can come back to these. So the next step will be the log dog mounting bracket. This being the log dog these being the mounting brackets. If your lumber mate is not equipped with the trailer package, install the bracket at holes 12 and 13. In 12 and 13, you have to figure out for yourself. So with the flared end of your cross bunks, these are all pointing this way, the flared end, you start counting up and they have number 14 pointed out right here and that's how you know this is the only indication of how you know what to do here 
they are not very clear in their directions they they rely heavily on the exploded view for you to understand so you better get used to reading that all right so we've got the log dog mounting bracket right here and we had to remove the number 12 and 13 top bolts because they did not tell us in advance that this bracket was going to go there so we had already put the nut and bolt and tightened it down so we had to remove that on both sides and now you have the log dog travel stop bar and we're going to insert that you can go ahead and tighten one side down on your brackets and then you insert the bar into the bracket on the other side and then tighten it down and that's what we're going to proceed and do with further examination it looks like the nuts and bolts that i needed for the log rest are indeed included in the the next packet of nuts and bolts which I've got laid out I've already used four of them installing the log dog rest right there which are the two on the bottom for each bracket now we have to install the rest of it so the next step is to slide the log dog bar into the log dog assembly getting it positioned the right way okay I wanted to point out when you put this log dog assembly on that the log dog assembly is pointing in this is the side you walk on and then your sawdust your exhaust side is on the other side and you want it pointing toward your exhaust side so this is where your log rest will come up stop your log and then you pin your log with your log dog assembly okay so the next thing to do is install the log dog clamping block onto the log dog assembly. You just take it and put it on there and you use the pin supplied in the bag. And it just pushes on there. So the next thing to do is install the can't stop. And uh, you know on the exploded view it does not show the can't stops on here at all. Let's see, you see the log rest right here in the background. So I'm guessing wherever a log rest bracket is going to be, then you install these on the back side. So not understanding log rest brackets, nuts and bolts were, were in this package number two. Um, I've gone back and done this step. You put it on each cross bunk second to the end. And that's what it's going to look like. And you can turn it either way, whichever orientation you want. Looks to me like the adjustment handle here is going to uh, be pretty tight if you put it close to the rail. So I chose this orientation here. The can't stop looks like it uses these two bolts right here. And then the, you have the four bolts that hold the log rest bracket on. From the exploded view, it looks like it uses these two holes, though. So we're going to have to take those back off and uh, install the can't stop here. Okay, so we just got the log rest brackets in place, and um, so I'm seeing an issue. I got the four-foot bed extension, which is from one cross bunk to the next, basically. And um, when you start looking at it, let's look here. So when you look at it, it tells you one from each end, one cross bunk from each end. So that's my starting one. You can see my log rest sticking up. There's my other one, one from the end. But with the four foot bed extension, unless I'm cutting really long lumber, it doesn't behoove me to have it down here. I've already installed my can't stop and tighten those bolts back down. So I'm pretty sure we're just going to go ahead and move it back down to here, uh, leaving one cross bunk in between. Just like the book says, regardless of the four foot extension, that way we can saw a reasonable log. Okay, now we have the log rests and the cant stops both in position. After much tightening and untightening and retightening to get everything just right. I've also drilled holes in the deck to accommodate for the log rest because you need to allow 12 inches underneath the 
bottom of these so they can travel up and down. I'm not going to lift my sawmill up that high right now. Maybe in the future. So the next step, you have to take and square your log rests. You take your board, shove it up against your log rests, like so. Then you take your carpenter square and put it on top of your board and adjust squareness with your adjustment bolts which are on the side of your bracket. All right, that's gonna finish it for this section of the uh, instruction manual. We've done a lot of leveling and truing up to the, the bed assembly and it's taken quite a bit of work to get it just, just so. And that's, you wanna take your time on this part. It's very important to get everything leveled out just how you want. I'm gonna go back and check all the level of the cross bunks again now that I've got everything set up, I've got all the feet screwed to the deck, it, it moved it a little bit when I screwed the feet down. So you definitely want to screw the feet down before you go to leveling the cross bunks. It goes together fairly easily. The instruction manual is definitely lacking in a few places, uh, but if you're mechanically minded, you, you'll be able to figure this out. It's not too complicated. I do wish they had clearer instructions on some of it. The can't stops, you know, maybe a suggestion where to put them if you don't want to tell your customers where to put them. Maybe a suggestion would help, you know, small things like that. Norwood, if you need help writing instructions, I'll help you. Just let me know. Make sure you take your time, true everything up, make sure it's level and it's looking good the way you want it. Nobody else is going to make these mistakes with you at this point, so make sure you get it right. And I'm Mountain Mike. I appreciate you joining me out on the mountain. Come see us again. Till next time. <laughs>